We're bringing it back for a reason that some of you will probably be left scratching your head about. That's right everyone, we have brought back our FA5 Civic or FD2 Type R conversion if you'd like to call it that. And man, does this thing ever look good, but we're bringing it back for a reason that some of you will probably be left scratching your head about. We're gonna take off the supercharger and I will explain to you why right now. Why on earth would we take off the supercharger after having done all that work, making all that glorious horsepower? It made like 380 at the wheel. And the answer is a fairly simple one. We originally built this car thinking A, it was gonna be a track rat, and B, it needed to keep up with Pete's E90 M3, so it needed the horsepower bump to try to keep up with that car. However, we've kind of gone back to this car being more of a true street car. We much prefer the aesthetics of it on a non-staggered wheel and tire setup which means we don't have a lot of front tire on this car and all this horsepower does is just blow the front tires off of it. And yes, it's fun to have that much power for a quick you know, acceleration pulls and stuff like that, but ultimately as a street car, we think we might enjoy it more in an NA configuration where it has a more suitable amount of horsepower for this wheel and tire setup and it has the amount of horsepower that you can really use and enjoy in a more responsible way in a street car. So. Are you trying to tell me less is more, DP? Sometimes less really is more. And uh, you know, as I get older, I think that's something I realize more and more. So this may not be the choice for the 25 year old enthusiasts out there, but for the middle aged enthusiasts, this might be the way to go if you're really, you know, aiming to have an enjoyable street car where you can really dip into VTEC and not go to jail. So uh, removing this blower should be relatively simple. It was a bit of a battle to install it, as you guys may recall if you watched that video series. We had to like trim a bit of a hole in the hood. We fought with belt links and there was complications because it was a K24 bottom end, not a K20 bottom end. All that to say, reversing it won't be a terrible job. And then we will go to the dyno. We'll see how much power it makes in NA, guys. And then we're going to take it for a rip and show you guys what we think of this car NA in this sort of final FD2 Type R form. that we're back to a naturally aspirated setup. It really wasn't much work, was it, Pete? Like the si supercharger came off very quickly, very easily. That drive belt area, DP, not fun. This is the worst of it for sure. This like convoluted 19 part engine mount assembly. If you don't put it back in the right order, you gotta go back two steps to put the next thing in, which I, I, I've done three times now. Putting the belt on is a pain in the butt, but it's done, it's all wrapped up. However, we're gonna do a couple of other things after having had a quick chat with uh, Nick from Tuning by Nick, who's gonna tune the NA setup for us. The first thing he told us is change out those stock injectors. They're 310 CC and in his, in his experience on his dyno, they will get maxed out even on a basic NA setup like this. So the quick and easy solution are RDX injectors. That's the Honda part number there. 
There's these magical blue guys here. We've used them before. These are 410cc and these give you the breathing room or the fueling room you need for tuning an NA setup like this. And they're very affordable. We sourced ours from garage16.ca, shop locally to us here in the Mississauga area. And as a matter of fact, they're offering a 10% discount on anything on their website. Just use code SA10. We'll put a link in the description to that. Sadly, these aren't a plug and play solution. You'd kind of think it's Honda OEM, but uh, Honda did change the clips for those RDX injectors. So k -Tuned does offer a solution. So we're just gonna have to swap these, as you can see like this. And that will be the depth of what you have to go to. So not a big job, but still a little inconvenient. The other modification we decided to make is a different air intake system. This used to have like a short ram in here that sucks in lots of hot air and just is not ideal for making horsepower, where this hybrid racing system is the known go-to for making maximum power on these K20Z setups, these 8th gen Civic SIs. It's three and a half inches in diameter. You can see it's got this really clever bypass valve built in here that will actually draw air in should the filter ever become submerged in water. So it's a very safe system. But most importantly, it makes like an advertised 14 horsepower over the stock air intake. Makes a bit more power than like all the other three and a half inch systems. However, it does come with a battery relocation bracket down in here. So you do have to move the battery down out of the way to make room for this big boy. But it's really not a terrible job. And uh, the other thing you do need to know is that this will not work with your factory tune. So you have to get the ECU recalibrated to, to use this intake. So that is really maybe the one big hurdle. But if you've already got Flash Pro in your car or some other tuning solution, then this is really the way to go. Okay, hybrid racing intake complete, including this nice little bracket that locates the filter securely down here in this low pressure area. So all we have left to do is top up the coolant, load in a tune from Tuning by Nick, which is calibrated for this intake, and of course those injectors, and then we can turn the key. All right, let's see if she fires up. There you go. Whoa, pottery, smooth. Look at that. All right, guys, coolant is bled and this thing's ready to go, so off to the dyno we head. strapped down to tuning by Nick's dyno jet it is ready to party yeah and as is tradition around here we're gonna guess at the power numbers because why not significantly less than last time yes we were like 380 ish before yeah what do you think now I don't know I should make about 240 240 I think like Oof. it's a 8th gen head right so yes 8th gen cams you think yes k24 bottom end yeah. uh, it's got like good intake good Stunt exhaust two. yeah best header yeah. Um, should make around 240. 240, okay. Well, I think the previous owner claimed it made 232, mm -hmm. but that was on like, got a hot air intake K&N. Yeah. This, this uh, hybrid racing one should make more power. It's a much so. better intake. But it also had stock injectors, DP. It's true, which it's true. they usually max out around 220 something. Stock yeah, injectors. so it's curious that it was making 232 on the stock injectors. Yeah. Anyway, Nick's clearly the expert here. 
I'll pick a number just for a tradition's sake and say 236. Cool. PT, what are you going with, buddy? 228. <laughs> <laughs> he always goes the price is right low. I'm going low. I'm going low, low. low on this one. <laughs> so. All right. Well, this probably won't take terribly long, will it? No, it should be pretty quick. Pretty straightforward? Yeah. All right. Let's make some noise. Definitely. And wow, that is some really impressive power. Yeah. It beat all of our predictions. Yep. 244 and 196 torque. And what is it about this this combination of like 24 bottom end and K20 head? It just works. It's the go-to. Like K24 bottom end with 8th gen Civic SI head just as is. It, it always makes like 240, 240 something. On stock cams, that just yeah. blows my mind. Like back in the day, my K24 with cams and ported head made 250 and yep. on, you know, better gas it's just it's, yeah. it's wild to me how, how strong that is which kind of begs the question why did we supercharge this car to begin with <laughs> I know I had to chase his m3 and that's yeah, really totally. why we wanted the power but this is gonna be so good so lively on the street I mean with the 225 tire in the front I think this is a perfect setup but oh totally why don't we throw the graph up for the supercharger actually just we, for fun yeah see what it made yeah. before and it's still a little before and after and before and after there you can see the supercharged graph in blue obviously and uh, it made a best of 384 wheel horsepower and 268 torque, which, you know, that's 140 wheel difference and mm -hmm. about a 70 foot pound torque difference. It, it's impressive how much power this thing makes NA. Yeah. Obviously the 140 wheel feels pretty spicy. That difference feels pretty spicy in a yeah. straight line, but we found it really hard to use that power, especially it's on these 225s drive. that we were just lighting up the tires, even yes. a third gear, you'd go to wipe out a throttle and it would spin the tires. Yeah. Like it's fun, but kind of excessive in a sense. And it really is more power because it's all up top. Like if you look at it, if you start looking in the mid range, it's not that crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, the, like the, it, the difference in here is not not, yeah. not as crazy, you're right. And that was only at, I think, maybe seven and a half or eight pounds of boost. So you were saying yeah. that converts to about your... Yeah, you usually make about 20 horsepower per pound of boost. Right. So and that's pretty much exactly what we're seeing here, right? Yeah, yeah. It does beg the question, like, is it worth spending that six or seven thousand dollars on the supercharger if it's just a street car that you want to rip around and have fun and uh i think what we need to do now is actually go for a drive on the street in this and, yeah. and decide for ourselves See if you miss the supercharger yeah exactly do yeah. we are we just na guys do we are we less know. power guys is that what we've I become in our I old like age more power the better for see me. He's, he's the more power guy well let's go for a drive and see what we think all right pt na power setup you're right why do you want a blower if you're unless you're like you know drag racing, drag racing unless you're going you know like 280 mile racing yeah or, like a, you're building a dedicated track car that you put 285s on like it just it, or you think you have to keep up with an e90 m3 is well, that, is that yeah, why we did yeah, it i think yeah, that's probably that, why that's we probably did why it. but man it feels, it feels so, good. so lively <laughs> Yeah. 
you know, it, it just feels like that experience might yeah. feel like if you actually had a yeah. real FT2. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really like this. I mean, to me, this is a proper street car now where, you know, it's still going to be plenty fast, plenty of torque, As we've just plenty shown. of response yeah. in any gear. Yeah. And yet, you know, without the added complexity of the supercharger and without really the needless horsepower, where, yeah. you know, I can already light the tires up in second and third yeah. in NA. Yeah. Like imagine trying uh -huh. to put down an extra 140 horsepower. And for me, it's remarkable like how quickly this car gets up and goes. Like you're at 3,000 RPM if you just dip, dip into it. Like oh, yeah. it's hard. Like look at it. It just, it's just that's not even VTEC. That's not making the power there. And then yeah. it just like comes on. Yeah. It doesn't feel slouchy. Not at all. No. And not like a K20 does. No. If you drive one of these stock yes. versus this. Oh, night and day. Day. Like the, the stock ones just feel so slow. Like night look at this. Like right away I can feel it. Oh my goodness, man. everyone a quick drive in the now naturally aspirated k24 slash k20 fd2 inspired fd5 civic si that is a mouthful and wow what a fun car I, I do love this thing and i'm wondering what you guys think do you think i've lost my mind preferring it naturally aspirated because i really do think i prefer it naturally aspirated or do you think that i've actually made the wisest decision ever because we've simplified it and we've brought it back more toward you know the way honda intended it and maybe to a power level that suits the wheel and tire package that we put on it and maybe just suits the chassis in general better let us know in the comment section what you guys think and uh i think that's a wrap everyone i think we're actually done with this project in its entirety so this is its fond farewell i absolutely love this car and we hate to see it go but uh the shop's overflowing with hondas so we got to move on to the next one do make sure that you like and subscribe because we got a whole bunch of other cool hondas coming at you as well as lots of other you know makes and models we're not just honda people pete has a stash of bmws to come and we've got an nc miata k-swap build we're planning lots of cool stuff to come guys so like subscribe and we'll see you in the next one